lot of the time you feel like you're wrestling with writing and trying to eke the truth out of it, make it make sense because a lot of things are written by committee and written last minute, and, you know, but this, this has a level of authorship, which, which is so actor friendly. Like if something, if something is beautifully written, it's, 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 it sort of drives itself. Like it, it, you don't have to add that much to it. It would, it would take care of you when writing is really fine and really good. So that's what I was saying, first and foremost. I've read a lot of scripts. That's, that's what, what, you know, as an actor, you're a sort of professional reader. It's, 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 a, it's a big part of your career, uh, is, is reading. Even if you're just getting into it, you should have read all the great plays. I know it's a boring thing to say, but you sort of should. Because you, you need to know the landscape. You need to know the, la the theatrical landscape that you're stepping into. You need to know about that. Um, so you read a lot. You've got to read a lot of plays. And over that process of reading, you start to you start to just work out what it is you instinctively relate to. And also you have an instinct about whether the thing that you're reading, that character that you've been sent, whether it's in your wheelhouse and if it's not. How you can create that, um, how you can get to a place where you can essentially play anything. So first things to say is my dad's a famous actor, right? So, but not just an actor, a very successful. One. So. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. But I was always, I didn't just do it because he was an actor. It was just, this, you know, I think all actors listening to this will know that it's a thing deep within you. It's mm -hmm. a calling that like we were talking briefly before we came on area, that it's a calling, it's a vocation that you can't describe as part of your soul. Um, but anyway, I was like, well, that's what I want to do. So anyway, did the youth theatre and then I loved it. Because although my dad was an actor and there was actors that come round, I went to a, a, a um, States called in South East London, where no one was really into acting. I was the only one really into it. First and foremost, I feel like I found my tribe, my people. Mm. You know, and I, I'm, I'm really thankful and I'm really delighted and proud of my tribe. Like, I love actors. Mm. I love them. I think they're open-hearted, beautiful, lovely, vulnerable, short, egotistical, solipsistic, but really fun company, right? Yeah. And I get on with them and I feel an affinity with other actors. They're my people. They're simply my people. So I got there and I was like, right, these are my, I feel like I'm home finally. I feel like I found my people. And then you see how good everyone is. So you get an instant idea of, can I cut it at this level? You know, you know what, maybe I can. Um, and then I didn't get into drama school. I auditioned for Rada and Lambda, I didn't get in. And how was that? <laughs> It was a kick, kick in the guts, yeah, because, because as I said, that's, my, that's what my dad did. And up until now, I'd mirrored my dad. I did the National Youth Theatre. I was like, well, this is going to be easy, mate. I mean, it, and he went to Rada, my dad. was like, well, I'll get into Rada, didn't get in. And the um, best thing that could have happened to me, because at that time, I was like, okay, this isn't that easy, is it? And it was my first, like, mm, this is really difficult. There's people out there a lot better than you, look, what, better prepared. And, so I had an unfair advantage and, I, and I'm open and thankful and privileged for that. Yeah. Now that's an advantage in so much as if a casting director's got a list of people and they see that one of those people is the son of a famous actor out of curiosity, they're going to want to get him in, see what they're like. Yeah. But that's, that I like to think is where the meritocracy kicks in is that you will get seen for a job because you've got a famous dad, but you won't get the job because you've got a famous dad. Right. Exactly. And if you do get the job, then the next person who sees you be shy in that film won't give you a job again. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, so, so I'm very, very thankful for the privilege and the leg up and the nepotism that I benefited from. And I really marvel at people who do it without that shit because, you know, most actors, most people getting into it don't have that. And I, and I'm, and I, 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 off my cap to those people. I, I really respect them. I've been lucky enough to do films all over the world, right? Work in America, Australia, whatever. And actors are the same everywhere. And I did a play on Broadway about seven years ago. I did Betrayal by Harold Pinter. And that's a three-hander. And that was directed by Mike Nichols. And it was me, Rachel Weiss, and Daniel Craig, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm like, 30 at this point, 31. And I'm in the middle of the play with these two movie stars. Yeah, all that movie stars. One's James Bond and the other one's won an Oscar. And they're married. 
and I was vulnerable and I was insecure. And the whole time I was like, why am I here? How did I get this? Fuck. And then, and then on the opening night, first time I did it in front of an audience, looked in each other's eyes and it was the great equalizer because they were just actors and they felt exactly the same as me. Mm. It matter, it matter the levels of success, the Oscars, the James Bond, it didn't matter. We were all the same. And so that bond that you get when you act with people sustains forever, you know, because you, because you know that they're as vulnerable as you are. Mm. So no matter the success, the geography, the actor, that that's why that's, 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 it's a very particular sort of person really is. And my dad, my dad's the same as that. It goes back to the fulfillment that you get out of being creative. Because that's what you're doing it for. You're doing it for the fulfillment, not for the success or not for the finished product, for the fulfillment in the moment of doing it. That's what we do acting for. We don't do it for status and glory and money and success. We do it for the, we do it for the feeling of doing it in the moment. Now, what is that feeling that we go for? That's called flow state, right? Now, flow state, you get that, any, you get that in any area of your life when you're doing something you're really happy doing flow state now depending on what your idea is of, of, of like meditation or whatever that, that's like meditating it's, I touched on it earlier it's like the zeroing of self where you're not thinking you're just creating that's why we do this how do you get there you need to have an unbelievably sound technique you need to really know what you're doing you need to really know the bones of the technique so say like you can only play improvisation or jazz if you know your scales like that. So they're in your DNA. Yeah. Right. That's be in your DNA. That's the only way you can then be creative. So you've got to know what you're doing. You've got, you've got to know your craft and your technique. Now that's personal, whatever it is that you feel like you've done the work, that's up to you. I don't need to know about that, but just do the work. It's private. And I think the actors who talk about what work it is they do, it's a bit, both boring, cheesy, and, and I don't want to know about that. So I don't, I don't want to know about, I don't want to know about, I don't want to see the strings. So whatever it is you need to do, to feel like you've done the work, do that. And then come onto the stage or in front of the camera and throw it away. Yeah. And be open, be open. Because, because when you, when an audience, you remember there's an audience watching you, you're doing it for them. You, you, you know, you're telling them a story, right? An audience doesn't care about you on your own, doesn't care about your acting partner. They care about the energy that is created between you. That's what's exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. That organic thing that is created between two actors, that is what is exciting. Now, if I'm too in my own head, thinking about all the terrific work I've done, trying to get my emotional recall going, then I'm not thinking about the scene. And I'm not thinking about the other person. I'm thinking about myself. Right, yeah. Right? So you've got to throw it away. Do the work. Know it's in you. and know it's there, but throw it away. And, and concentrate on the, on, your, on, the, on the person opposite you and be open. Be open. Now, it's a dangerous game to play, being open. Because sometimes it doesn't come. But again, going back to about being prepared to fail, I'd rock, so say you've got to cry in a scene. Mm -hmm. Actors put a lot of pressure on themselves to cry. Go, oh, you're still trying to squeeze out your tears. Oh my God, I just need to cry. You're not thinking about what's going on. You're not thinking about the scene. Yeah. You're just trying to cry. And it's phony. So I'd rather not cry and listen. And audiences will much more appreciate you listening and being in the moment and forcing out your phony tears. It's the most rewarding experience for an actor and also for an audience member because it's, because it's organic and real. Um, and I was lucky enough years ago to do a film with Ang Lee and he said all he's ever looking for is moments. And it's the moments that you remember, I think, as an audience member, the things that break your heart that are identifiable. That's what you're, that's what you're striving for, but they only come out of inspiration. Those things can't be accounted for or planned. You know, that's, that's one of the things about being, about being an actor is your dominion, your, your influence on a project ends on your last day of shooting.
that's it, say goodbye. So you've got to do a bit of psychological work on yourself in order to stop the inevitable disappointment. Yeah. Because, because you will be disappointed when you watch yourself. It's just, you, you are. Because when you're in the moment, you're not thinking about yourself. It's one of the reasons why we love acting so much is because you, you, you're out of your own head. You feel free. You feel you've zeroed yourself. It's like a deep meditation. So even though you're concentrating on it, you're feeling it, you're vibing, like you're, you're like really immersed in it. Yeah. You don't really know what it looks like. And then you watch it and you go, man, when I did that, I was really in the moment. When I watch it, now I, I can just see my big stupid head and like, you know, um, I sound really annoying. My voice is strange, blah, blah, blah. So what you've got to do is you've got to protect yourself from that by going, do you know what? The only thing that matters is the fulfillment I had making it. The quality and the success of the finished product are out of my hands. And it is like a long time ago, I gave up um, putting any onus really on the finished product. Like you go in for something to the best of intentions, but you've got no control over its finished quality. You try as hard as you can. And then I've learned that you go, do you know what? Like, I'm not going to have any expectations over it. I'm going to let it go and see what happens because then you're never disappointed. And if it's a hit and a success, then great. So really, the only thing that matters is the enjoyment you have doing it. Yeah, that's what you have to tell yourself because otherwise what are you doing it for? Like you, you have to enjoy making films because it's unbelievably privileged that you get to do this. Um, it's the thing that you always dreamed of doing. Um, it's a thing that people around the world dream of doing. And it's a thing that gives a great deal of people a lot of joy. And, and, and to be involved in that is really wonderful. And like, I just can't wait to, I can't wait to get back out there and do it. I, lo I, I, I love film crews. You, there's such a sense of camaraderie of all these people coming together and working really intensely for a period of time and from, from, from forming these bonds and then it will go. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a really beautiful way to spend your life and I, and I, and I for one can't wait to get back to it. Yeah, I was going to ask right? you actually about Esther, you and Esther Smith on, on trying because your chemistry is what is so enchanting about the whole thing. Well, it's really what acting is all about is chemistry so did you, did you guys have a chemistry test? Be like, how did that come about with that? Yeah, thing? we did a chemistry test. Yeah, yeah. The dreaded chemistry read where you need to like engineer tangible chemistry in front of the people who were, you know, sat there in a, in a, in a, in a generic like casting suite or whatever. It's like, it's always icky. Um, and I knew they wanted us to read together. So I, I booked this room in a place called the Spotlight in England, which is like a casting suite. Like it's where you go and audition together and, rehearse or whatever and I put this room for three hours for me and Esther to meet before so we could go over the scenes and we just got on like we liked each other like we really liked each other and it felt very easy to say the words uh she's really quick and funny and listen you're only as good as the person in front of you and she's really good so then going back to what I was saying before it just becomes a, it just becomes a case of keeping up like and just vibing it's really nice to find other people that you can act with that give you, give you a lot back and make you raise your game. And still to this day, other people make you better at acting. Mm -hmm. You're only as good as the person acting opposite you. So in trying, say, I think Esther Smith's really good, yeah? So my, in my, my, I'm just trying to keep up with her. I'm not thinking about myself, I'm trying to keep up with her, right? Which takes you out of yourself. So what do you remember? You've got to get out of your own head when you're doing acting. Concentrate on what's opposite you. It's not you or her, it's the thing that's created between you. That's, that's magic there that's what we do it for mm -hmm. and you only get that by being open well you get into a situation where you're revealing bits of yourself and mm -hmm. emotions part of yourselves that mm -hmm. you don't even show to your family and friends so if you're being very emotional and open you're having to do that in front of a stranger um so it does make it much easier when you've got one of your best friends <laughs> there, <laughs> really so each job you're exploring yourself and you're realizing that you can in fact perform under pressure so that's the big that's the biggest thing mm. pressure yeah. Can you perform under pressure? That's one of the biggest things about acting. The way that a film set set up is that you've got a hundred people in a room going about their business. And then someone essentially goes, everyone shut up. Right, go. Right. And so then to not tense up when that happens is, 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 is part of the secret of, of being good at acting because it's very easy to do that. You have two options. Do I just like try and stay alive? Or do I try and be free and creative when this huge pressure is falling on you, right? Um, 
So if you do it like a sporting analogy, it's like, if I'm, if I'm a batsman in cricket, do I go out and just defend the ball and try and stay in, or do I play shots that I've never played before? Throw caution to the wind. Now, that's really scary, yeah? Mm. And you only know the result of that if you've done it. And so you go like, do you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to be free and give it a go. And I, know, I now know that I can do that. Yeah. I now know that I can perform under pressure. So that gives you a confidence. That gives you a confidence that, that you can do it. And so when I did the play just now at the, at the, and again, when I'm on the first night of doing that one person show, I just had to remind myself that I'd never let myself down before. Yeah. It's like, you've never, you've never folded before because that's the thing. That's the, that's the worry. You're going to choke. You're going to forget your lines. Everyone's going to laugh at you and you're never going to work again. But you go, well, no, I've never done that before. So that body of work gives you a confidence. Yeah. Also, what I'd say is there is a, ve and this is true. There is a very, very thin line between terrible acting and brilliant acting. And I really believe that. Now, now you need to be really, and I'll tell you the thing that links those two things is bravery. Yeah. You need to really be brave to be terrible in something. Yeah. The actors that I, I would, I, I want to see actors put themselves out there, take some risks. Because anyone can keep their head beneath the parapet, do a bit of mumbly acting and pretend, and do you know what I mean? And be like, oh, you guys don't look at me. But the actors that I've always responded to as my favourites are people like Gary Oldman and Jack Nicholson and Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis, they're big. They're big actors. And sometimes they get it really wrong. Hopkins get it really wrong. But I'd rather see strong and wrong, right, yeah. than, 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 than not than keeping it on the down low and playing to your strengths. Right. Like, like, go hard or go home, right? Yeah. Like, let's, yeah. Let, like, like, be brave. And who cares if you fail? Because you have to fail to realise how to not do it. But it's fine to fail. It's fine. It's really fine to fail. Mm -hmm. It's really fine. You have to fail. Most of the time, you will fail. Most of the takes you do won't work. A lot of the plays that you do won't work. You'll spend ages doing a film that meant so much to you and then you bring it out and everyone goes, yeah, it's all right. Okay. Because very few of the things that you do hit. That's the fact of life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so the only thing that you can do is get better. The only thing that you have any control over is improving. You don't have any control over success or whether people will like things. That's by the by. All you've got control over is like imp improving and getting better. The only way to get better is by doing it wrong. Yeah, great. And great. you're never going to get there. You're never going to get there. You are never going to get to a point where you feel like you've nailed it. You're never going to get to a point where you feel like you're finished. You're never finished. You never get to the point where you go, do you know what? Now I'm a good actor. That will never come. To use a a cheesy phrase the journey not the destination because you know we don't want to get there guys we want to work out what it's like to get there yeah yeah so, but it, you know this is another reason why i love actors yeah um is is most of the time we don't sit there we don't sit there talking to each other about how great we are we sit there making each other laugh talking about how shit we are right <laughs> talking about talking about the ways we humiliated ourselves right or a way that we were at an embarrassing audition or we don't sit there going oh yeah i'm gonna work with blah blah and i'm a really cool dude we all sit there laughing at the fact that we're all shite right <laughs> that's that's my that's one of the things that bonds us together because we constantly operate from a place of fear now that to me is one of the reasons why actors have traditionally called each other love and darling and sweet and all that sort of thing because it's an immediate intimacy because we're all frightened and we're all scared and we're all operating from a place of fear and we're only got at our last job and, you know, through a pre process of a long career, you realise what your limitations are. It's all about working out what your limitations are. And I think that every actor, when they put their head on their pillow at night, they know what it is they have to offer the world. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why it can be a really horrible job. Because unfulfilled ambition is crippling, right? And you're sat there and every night you're going to bed and you're going, man, I know I can do this. I know I've got this to offer. I know I'm better than these other people that I see. I know it. Or your voice is going, I'm not quite as good as other people. Whatever, whatever it is, right? You've got that deep burning voice inside you. Um, 
and so it's a process of actually understanding what your true limitations are um and early on you're you're not scared of anything it's not, you become sort of more scared i'll do a, a big name drop now yeah I, I once met al pacino right mm. and i was with this other actor called bobby it worked with al pacino they did a film together and and bobby said to al pacino <laughs> he said he said hey al i saw some of the film we did he said oh you're terrific in it al and al pacino was like this really bobby oh that's good news oh thank god really it's good i was good al pacino still worried about being good in a film oh, still wow. looking for affirmation still looking still looking for people to say that they think he's good it's fucking al pacino al pacino yeah? man. Wow. it never ends it ne that's why we were trying because we know what it's like. Because you're in the club, mate. You're in the place of fear. You know what it's like. Mm. Anyway, I think you have to use nerves as a tailwind, not a headwind, right? Because nerves can do one of two things. They can push against you or they can push behind you. Now, if you think that when you, you know, when you fall over, right? Mm. Just normally in everyday life, you fall over. You get a rush of adrenaline that goes through you. Yeah. As you're going over. Brrr. Now, what that rush of adrenaline does is that makes your arms come out quicker. It makes you more alert. And it makes you faster of thought. So it's your body going, quickly be superhuman for a second to protect yeah. yourself. Now, that's what nerves are doing when you're getting into a pressurized situation of going to an audition or um, uh, getting up on stage. They can help you. They can make you a cleaner, faster, more concentrated version of yourself. Mm. You have to remember and do a lot of psychological work on the fact that that's what nerves are for. They're not there to impede you. They're there to help you. But that's a lot of deep psychological work you've got to do on yourself. Trusting yeah. your instinct. Because the whole time, everyone else, you know, you'll be getting bad reviews. You'll be getting people saying, are you sure you shouldn't pursue another career? Do something a bit safer. And all the time you've got these instincts inside you saying, nah, man, I, I believe I can do this. You've got to keep hold of it. You've got to keep hold of it. And that's the same thing that tells you how much talent you've got. It's the same thing that tells you how much bravery you've got. you just got to, I guess it's like a light. You've got to just hang on to it. I've had thousands of bad auditions. I've had those auditions when you're in there and you're like, this is, this is not going my way. And then you feel the, sweat start to pour down your torso and you're like i've got this is this is this is poor i'm being poor this is terrible they don't like me they're never going to cast me they knew from the second i walked in they didn't want to cast me but they're just getting through with but it's it's positive it's all good because you need to know you need to know you know you just need to know you need to know what that feels like because you need to know whether you can deal with it and take it because it's all rejection and it's horrible and as i said earlier for every 500 job for every jobs I've, job i've got there's been 500 i haven't and um, part of being successful in this is realizing how much rejection you can take. It's a very, it's a big cliche, but it's true. Mm -hmm. So I've got, I, I've had, I've had many terrible auditions, um, but it's all part of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just fun to do. Like, you have to remember when, like, like filmmaking should be fun. Like, it, like it really should, because it's like actors. Who, look, I take my work personally extraordinarily seriously yeah that's a deep private process it's part of my identity it's part of my soul it's part of who i am yeah it's my great passion in life and uh the only thing i really know anything about and um i'm always happy to talk about it and talk about how much i love it and you know because i spend a lot of my life thinking about it and well, it's my it's my passion it's my great passion yeah exactly and we were saying just before we we came on and broadcast that you have to really want to be part of the world to be working in it, in casting and in, in acting, and be obsessed with it. And I think it sounds like you're pretty much obsessed with it. <laughs> well, that's why, that's why you, you get like, you're, it, it's born in you, you're born with it. You don't ask for it. If anything, it's an affliction. <laughs> it's not a gift. It's like, you, you, you don't ask for this shit. You don't ask to like spend your life in, a, in anxiety and uncertainty and not knowing where the next job's gonna come from. And 
you know, by the way, I mean, this, this is the thing with lockdown, isn't it? It's like a lot of actors right now on lockdown, like, they, they, like a lot of the world now knows what it's like to be an actor all the time. Like I spent right. a lot of my time, like I spent a lot of, of my time, like sat in my pants drinking in the day, not knowing where the next paycheck's coming from. Like this is, this is generally just the life of an actor, guys. You know what I mean? Like, this, <laughs> anyway. Get used to um, it. <laughs> yeah, get used to it. Like now you know how we feel, right? <laughs>